Ruth, what's happening in the world of conservation? Well, first of all, can I say how great it is to be back on your programme. I haven't seen you for ages, so I hope On the Land goes really well. Good information for the rural community particularly, but I'm sure for city dwellers also. Um, so I have the conservation um, portfolio for Labour, and one of the big current issues is that pretty well everyone who's interested in this has been waiting for a national policy statement on biodiversity from the government. It's a really important document that local authorities, community organisations can use to guide their activity. So this has been you know, 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014, hello, it's 2015, we still haven't seen it. And um, just over the last few days, the Minister, Nick Smith, said he was prepared to progress the National Policy Statement on bi Biodiversity, but only if he gets a, um, an indication of collaboration from the farming community and from conservationists. So it was a big step forward, we might get the NPS finally, but it had a big bottom line, so to speak. This was the collaborative process. So I haven't heard any responses yet, but I think it's a really interesting development. Isn't it a case of trying to mix oil and water? Well, it, it is in a way. Um, if, you, if you said to most people, what do you think about collaborative processes, people working together to get an agreed outcome, it's motherhood and apple pie. Who wouldn't say they thought it was a good idea? But if you look a bit deeper, um, what we end up with is people agreeing to the lowest common denominator. They just basically go down to who couldn't disagree on this, that'll be it. So you get a really low quality outcome. And that's because the government isn't setting any standards or framework. They're just saying, we want an NPS, go out and, and do it, and we want you to agree on it. They need to have really clear principles, they need to have a really clear framework. What are we trying to achieve with this? And then get people to work together to that end. At the moment it's pie in the sky. Do you think they're worried about TPP and, and the reaction from New Zealanders saying we want to know what's going on? Well actually I thought that the reaction from the government to the pretty big protests all around New Zealand over the weekend um, was really insulting. That I was at the rally in Christchurch, it was pouring with rain for most of it, everyone got wet, uh, it was a very peaceful protest and it wasn't the renter crowd, uh, it wasn't the people that you see at every protest um, on the TV, uh, we had a lot of older people there who are worried about access to medicines particularly, a lot of people spoke to me about that, we had doctors there, doctors aren't ones to go out on the street with a placard, uh, protesting against things. They are really concerned about the Pharmac regime. Uh, we had a lot of people who were just angry that, that New Zealand's sovereignty was being threatened, but we were having no say in it. So the secrecy was a big issue. And farmers were there, interestingly enough, saying, are we going to get anything out of this, or is this just another con? So you don't very often see farmers out protesting either, unless it's over climate change and em <laughs> emissions trading scheme. Um, so a really diverse group of people, and Tim Grosser basically went, who cares? I don't think that's good enough when you have people voicing their strong concerns to just be dismissed. We want to know that our sovereignty will be protected, that farmers will get a better deal, well all of New Zealand actually will get a better deal, um, that our farm act regime will be protected, we won't be paying more for medicines, you know we've worked hard on that model um, across all parties in Parliament to protect it and now we, we risk losing it and it's being negotiated in secret. It's almost as though the majority of people have no idea what it's all about. Well I think that when you have a um, a vacuum of information, then it's often filled with things that may not be true. But in this case, we've had some pretty substantive leaks that are clearly accurate. Um, and that they do say that some of the countries that we're negotiating with are saying, better access for New Zealand farmers over our dead body. So that, that's the point of a trade agreement. It's to give us better access to other markets. We haven't got enough New Zealanders to buy all our stuff. So we want the best possible trade deal we can get. If we are losing things in this trade deal and not gaining things, why would we sign up? It doesn't make sense to me. And, and as you say, it's being done in secret, so we don't know. that There is nothing stopping the government saying, here's what's on the table, here's our bottom lines, here we, here's where we want to get. That at least would include New Zealand in the conversation. We, we did it in the past. 
with the China trade agreement. There's no reason at all why this current government couldn't do it now. And Ruth, the other subject I want to talk to you about is Landcorp and, and expanding their dairying. It's sort of... The, the, doesn't seem to be appropriate time-wise. Uh, we, we've just watched Solid Energy pretty well collapse from having you know, multi-million dollar cash in the bank. We raise concerns about the pressure that the government was putting on what should be a protected industry, it's, it's coal. We know that the coal trade is going down, so we said keep their reserves intact. Solid Energy is now in huge trouble. Millions of taxpayer dollars, your dollars, have gone into that organisation and lots of jobs have been lost as a result. And now we're seeing Landcorp, when dairy prices are pretty well at the bottom of what you can break even on, saying we're going to expand into dairy. I'm not sure they've got their timing quite right <laughs> for, for, for taxpayers' money <clears throat> again. So that's the first problem. Are we seriously putting taxpayers' money into dairy expansion? But the second thing is, what, what will that do, the increased competition, and it's quite substantial, what will that do to our existing dairy industry? This is nonsense. We've got dairy farmers who are on the edge of bankruptcy, who are in a critical condition financially and can't see much coming better for a while, and, and we've got the government backing expansion into their area. To a lot of people it would be very strange because most budgets for farmers are showing about a half a million dollars worth of debt, not profit this year. Well so I, I, think, <clears throat> I think we've got a, a really big situation in dairying that the government seems to be walking away from. We've got banks that are saying you know, we'll support the dairy farmers for, for a short term. Uh, this, this may not be short term. It's not short term. If, if they have borrowed big amounts of money and are relying on a high payout in order to service their mortgage and to build their business, and they're getting a low payout, they're in trouble, and it's not a short-term short problem. I think the government should be stepping in and saying this is a key part of our economy, as well as the individuals. What's it doing to them as people? You know, they're good people, they're just trying to make their way in the world. Um, they should be saying, we're going to be there to support you and make sure you come out the other side of it. Things will get better, there will be the other side of it, but it could be quite a while.